Okay, now that we've learned the general structure of amino acids, um, we need to think about their stereochemistry. Most amino acids are optically active. Which one isn't? Well, we mentioned that earlier. It's the glycine because it does not have a chiral carbon. Remember back to organic chemistry when we talked about optical activity and stereochemistry where we defined optical activity as the ability of a sample to rotate plane polarized light. It can rotate plane, optically active substances can rotate plane polarized light. They do so in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion and we can calculate the specific activity of them um, based on knowing the path length and the rotation and the concentration of the substance in our sample tube. Now with amino acids, it's really important to think about their stereochemistry since chirality and stereochemistry is so important in biological organisms. Enzymes have chirality or handedness associated with them. Your DNA has handedness associated with it, so right-handed helix. Even from the early embryonic development, there's um, polarity associated with the developing em embryo right-handed, left-handed, left-right, up-down. Um, and the true, same is true about amino acids. Uh, it turns out that amino acids um, that have chiral carbons are made in the L fashion, the levo fashion, with the levo stereochemistry. Levo means that they rotate plane polarized light in the counterclockwise fashion as opposed to dextro or D, which rotates light in a clockwise fashion. And so your body and the enzymes that synthesize amino acids make them in an L stereochemistry, and therefore we need to be able to recognize the naturally occurring L form of the amino acids when, they, when we draw them or when we see them in three-dimensional space. So again, we're focusing on the alpha carbon of our amino acid, the one that is attached to the hydrogen, the amine, and the carboxylic acid group. So L form. Now, how are we going to be able to tell whether um, a particular amino acid is in the L form or the D form? We're going to use something called the corn rule which is sort of a variation of the S and the R nomenclature that you used in organic chemistry. Now here's what the corn rule states. Let's focus down here on this um, generic amino acid. Here's the alpha carbon. It's got a hydrogen, an R group, um, the carboxylic acid, which we'll call CO, and then the amine group, which we'll call N. Now, the corn rule states that if you're looking at the alpha carbon with the hydrogen pointing at you, you should be able to spell corn in a clockwise fashion if you're an L-amino acid. So this is a little different from what we did in organic. When we were looking at a chiral carbon in organic, we always wanted that hydrogen or the fourth ranked substituent to be pointing away from us. So remember the corn rule. We want this hydrogen to be pointing at us. And if we can spell corn in a clockwise fashion, we have an L amino acid. Okay? If corn is spelled in a counterclockwise fashion, it's a D amino acid, the non-naturally occurring one. Okay, so let's uh, try this corn rule and see if we can apply it and figure out what's going on. So let's take some amino acids here. In this case, this is serine, right? And serine, let's see if we can do that, uh, in a bunch of different forms, right? So let's start with this version of serine. Um, again, serine, the R group is CH2OH. That's one of the amino acids that you have to learn for the class. And here's our um, alpha carbon right in the middle. Now, this first example is pretty nice. It's pretty easy for you. Um, and that's because the hydrogen is pointing out at you, right? Now, according to the corn rule, we want 
the perspective where the hydrogen is pointing at you. So then we look and we say, well, here's the carboxylic acid. So this is our CO. Here's our R group, R. And here's an R amine group, N. How do we spell corn? C-O-R-N in a clockwise fashion with the hydrogen pointing at us. That's it, right? This is an L amino acid right here. Okay, now let's try it over here. Um, this is sort of a less nice structure. We've got the hydrogen, and in this case it's a dashed line, so it's pointing away from us. Now, we could change our perspective and pretend that our eyeball was back in the screen, or probably what you learn to do in organic is if the hydrogen's the opposite orientation that you want it, you just uh, do the reverse rule. You see what um, you know the orientation looks like with the hydrogen pointing in the incorrect way, and then you reverse that orientation. And so let's use the opposite rule here. Um, the hydrogen is pointing away from us. That is not the direction we want. And in that opposite direction, we see the CO, R, and N. And so with the hydrogen pointing away from us, we're spelling corn in a clockwise fashion. That means if the hydrogen was pointing at us, then we'd be spelling corn in a counterclockwise fashion. It would be the opposite perspective. So this is a D amino acid. We're spelling corn in a clockwise fashion, but with the hydrogen in the incorrect orientation. Um, if the hydrogen was in the correct orientation, we'd be spelling corn in a counterclockwise, which is what happens with D amino acids. Okay, let's look at this one. Here's the alpha carbon. Here's our hydrogen. Here's our CO. Here's our R. Here's our N. I think these orientations are actually the hardest, right? The hydrogen's not pointing at us. It's not pointing away from us. So we can't just look at it straight on, or we can't do the opposite rule. We really do have to have some sort of perspective here. And so I'm going to put my eyeball over here. The eyeball's looking at that alpha carbon. And, well, shoot, I shouldn't have done it that way, right? I want the hydrogen to be pointing at me. I was going back to organic chemistry again. So we want to look at that alpha carbon with the hydrogen pointing at our eyeball. And what do we see here? Well, we see the CO is over on the left side, right? The left side of the eyeball because it's a dash. So I'll put a CO here. Um, the R is straight up. Uh, in perspective from our eyeball, and our nitrogen is coming to the right, right? It's coming out of the screen here as a, da as a wedge, but according to our eyeball, this would be our right side. So here's our N, so C-O-R-N. That's a clockwise corn with the hydrogen pointing at us, so this one would be an L amino acid. The last example I have here is a Fisher projection. You do often see uh, biomolecules displayed with Fisher projections, amino acids and, and carbohydrates especially. Now remember, with Fisher projections, we've got this chiral carbon in the middle. This should be a hydrogen down here. That's a typo. I put the hydrogen down there. Um, but here we've got our chiral carbon in the middle. And remember, the for Fisher projections, we can imagine that the left and the right bonds here are coming out at you as dashes, or as, sorry, as wedges, and up and down are dashes. Okay, so in this case, the hydrogen is pointing away from me as a dash, and I'm reading C-O-R, whoop, this is the N, N, R, so with the hydrogen pointing away from me, I'm spelling corn in a counterclockwise fashion. So if the hydrogen was pointing at me like it's supposed to be, I would be able to spell this in a clockwise fashion. So this is an L amino acid. Okay. So we'll practice some more of these in class. It does use the same part of the, your brain that you were used to using. 
in organic chemistry. It's just um, we have to remember this corn rule as a way to identifying the naturally occurring L amino acids.